It's a great shame that losing weight and dieting is besieged on every side with quick fix snake oil. It's everywhere. Whereas in reality, if you want a guaranteed way to lose weight, absolutely guaranteed, it's not that bad. The thermodynamic way. All you need is a few simple calculations and pretty much the willpower for the first week. Then it's not so bad. And that's maybe kind of important, seeing as being overweight kills hundreds of thousands of people in America every year and millions throughout the world. Now, maybe one of the most insidious things about weight gain is just how softly it sneaks up on you. I mean, think about it. If you just gain 10 grams per day, that's like the mass of one fifth of a chocolate bar, about one mouthful of food. Then by the end of the year, you're gonna be about three and a half kilos, seven or so pounds heavier than you were at the beginning of the year. And that's just over one year. You keep that up for 10 years and you're gonna be about 35 kilos, 70 pounds heavier. So it was that one day, a couple of years back, I got on the scales and found myself significantly overweight, probably about seven or so kilos, 14 or so pounds away from where would be a good place. It doesn't sound so bad until you realize that's about the same stuff that you've got to burn off as seven one liter bottles of oil. Now, up until about the age of 35, the very idea of a diet was a joke. I could eat whatever the hell I wanted. And true, I lived a fairly active lifestyle, but no weight gain would occur. Then middle age happened. So after gaining all of this weight, I had actually tried several times to diet and always it was a failure, in part for the very reasons I'm just about to show you. And success came from a most unlikely place, busting breatharians, people who claim that they only need to breathe and have the power of the universe to sustain them. Almost, I think maybe four times in my pregnancy with him, I ate something. And this was like in, in social settings. Pralad Yani, an Indian holy man born in 1929, claims to have neither eaten nor drank since childhood. Yani described how three goddesses appeared to him and told him that he, quote, need not be concerned about food ever again. It was another study conducted in India in 2003 that bafflingly seems to confirm the phenomenon of pranic feeding. It was conducted on a yogi who claims he has neither eaten nor drank for decades. Now here is Mr. Wiley Brooks who stopped eating 17 years ago, claiming that all the elements we need to survive are in the air and an occasional glass of fruit juice. Uh, this is called breatharianism. As it becomes a habit, in other words, eating is an acquired habit just like drinking alcohol or smoking cigarettes. Because when you're busting that, you actually do the calculations for what your metabolism needs to live per day. And you know how much oxygen you actually need per day? It's about a kilo, about two pounds. The same weight as a one liter bottle of soda, which you use to burn about a kilo of food, which is essentially sugar. You know, carbohydrates, that sort of thing. And then you breathe out about 1.4 kilos of carbon dioxide per day. And you produce about half a liter of water. This is why when NASA decided they were gonna send men to the moon, you know, where they would be on their own for a about a week or so, they had to put enough oxygen in the capsule for them to survive and carbon dioxide scrubbers, because without them, the carbon dioxide would have simply built up in a confined system and would kill you. Now, if you want that in terms of fat, which is of course what you've actually got to burn off on your body, that works out to about half a kilo of fat per day. So if you're in a complete starvation diet, you'll lose about half a kilo of body mass per day. Now, realistically, uh, starvation's a pretty harsh way to go. If you want a sustainable diet, more like 100 grams per day is about as sensible as you're gonna get. That would be reducing your calorific intake by about a fifth. And once you've decided on what is sensible, you can just do the calculations. You wanna lose seven kilos, it's going to take you about 70 days, two months. And this is probably the key to all successful dieting. You have to be mentally prepared to do this for the long game. Dieting is not something that you can do for, for a few days and hope to have any real effects. You need to keep this up for months. It's a stamina endeavor. 
Now, my experience was that it's only actually kind of bad for the first week. After that, your body adapts to the new normal and it becomes much easier. Then, actually, after a year or so, it actually gets uncomfortable to eat as much as I used to. I mean, now, just thinking about how much I would have to eat to get back to my former weight is actually pretty unpleasant. So that's how it comes to pass that I have all of this data about my body weight for the last two or so years. Now, in the first instance, I was weighing myself several times a day. Then I sort of gave up on that and just weighed myself every day in the morning. So you can see the immediate drop here. That's the success of the initial diet, which went on for a couple of months. And after that, I took a bit of a break because I was getting metabolic changes such as a dry mouth and my muscles were starting to cramp up, which, which was probably due to something like magnesium deficiency in my diet or something. But anyway, I resumed eating uh, normally and the symptoms vanished. Then I went on vacation where I lived a super active life and deliberately ate McDonald's almost every day and continued to lose weight. Yeah, those are basically your choices. You can eat less, which basically requires no extra time, or you can exercise more, which has much the same effect. But the whole idea of going to McDonald's every day was uh, it kind of debunked this supersize me idea, which didn't so much prove that eating at McDonald's was what would make you fat. It proves that stuffing yourself with food will make you fat. So the next period of weight loss was me moving house, which was again a period of intense exercise. So now I have this rather interesting data set. Now I didn't have any great plans to do anything with this data, but yeah, I just sat down the other day and you can actually do some rather interesting stuff with this, like get a reasonable estimate of the volume of your gut. Why would you want to do that? I'm not quite sure, but let me show you how you can get that out of this data. Now, you may have noticed that the weight goes up and down all over the place from day to day and so forth. And there's actually quite a large spread on that. So let's do a, a little averaging, say seven day averaging over the whole of this. So the red line is now the seven day rolling average of my body weight. Now I'm going to subtract off the daily values from the average values. So what you get is a bar of noise, which is basically how much my weight varies from my average weight from day to day. And at this point, you can see why expecting an immediate payoff from starting a diet is completely unreasonable. Remember what I was saying, that a really steep diet is 100 grams per day. And that's, that's really steep. I think in my best, it was like 70 or something. Yet my daily weight can fluctuate by more than 10 times this amount. In practice, this means if you want to plausibly see real weight loss, you have to look at the data over a period of several days. But there's something else interesting that comes out of this data. You see, I can plot it up as a histogram, such that the area under the curve is proportional to probability. So the practical upshot, you can see about 50% of the time my weight varies, plus or minus about 500 grams, and about 50% of the time my weight varies by more than 500 grams from what the average weight is. But the other interesting thing is you can see there is a sort of natural maximum and a natural minimum to this curve. So my maximum and minimum weight can be plus or minus about one and a half kilos of my average weight and never really gets higher, never really gets lower. Now, this is a combination of two things, uh, the hydration levels and the volume of my gut. So I need to make the assumption that water and food all have about the density of one kilogram per liter. So basically one kilo here is one liter of volume in my gut. So I'm just going to assume, and this is a fairly big assumption, that this is basically the maximum and minimum volume of my gut, which means from empty to the average value is about one and a half liters. And from the average value to completely stuffing my gut is about one and a half liters. Now, if you think about it, the gut is basically a hole that goes all the way through the middle of your body. And in my case, it can hold about three kilos out of my total body mass, which is about 90 kilos. The hole in my body holds about 3% of my body mass. But let's make another assumption that the food that I eat is about 50% water. The three kilos in my gut holds about one and a half kilos of food. And assuming that's mostly carbohydrates, 
That's enough to maintain stable operations of my body for mm, just over a day. Cool. So I've been alive for 40 something years. And this data, which I was more just gathering out of habit, has told me something about my body that I never knew before. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and ring the notification bell. And if you really enjoyed it, subscribe and maybe consider supporting this channel through Patreon.